This presentation will explain the difference between student proficiency and student growth and why it is important when understanding student PARC scores and help teachers and administrators explain to parents and the public how to interpret the scores. Like many of you, I was shocked when I recently read that 0% of Illinois high school students exceeded standards on the 2015 PARC math assessment. While I understand that the first year of administration had been difficult, this result was hard to reconcile. I realized that I needed a better understanding of what results to expect or what results would be normal. This inspired me to research what PARC is testing and what was the goal of the PARC assessment. Specifically, I had three questions. What is the goal of the new Illinois learning standards? How do we compare with what could have been expected for Illinois students to score? And how do we use these results to understand student progress in individual school districts? As many of you know, of the 42 states and District of Columbia that originally adopted Common Core, three states have rescinded their adoption. Indiana, South Carolina, and Oklahoma. Many have noted that Indiana and South Carolina standards look a lot like Common Core, but the legislatures in those states have rescinded their adoption. The PARC consortium originally had 24 states. 12 states administered the assessment, including Illinois. Since the administration, Missouri, Maine, and Ohio have decided to change assessments. And so far, Ohio and Illinois have released preliminary state data. Although Ohio changed the reporting categories agreed to by the PARC consortium. The cut scores are the same, but Ohio labeled a score of three as proficient, as opposed to approaching expectations. You will see in the end, at the end of this webinar, that is something I, will be rec I would recommend that Illinois should do. One of the stated goals of Common Core was to create internationally benchmark standards. According to the Common Core website, one of the ways to analyze education systems is to compare international assessments, particularly the Program for International Student Assessment, PISA, and trends in international mathematics and science study, TIMS. Prior to the development of the Common Core state standards, research revealed striking similarities among the standards in top performing nations, along with stark differences between these world-class expectations and the standards adopted by most United State states. As a result, standards from top performing countries were consulted during the development of the Common Core Standards. Prior to the development of the Common Core State Standards, research revealed striking similarities among the standards in top performing nations, along with stark differences between the world-class expectations and the standards adopted by most United States states. As a result, standards from top performing countries were consulted during the development of the Common Core Standards. As you can see from this chart, the top scoring country was China. USA was 36th of the 65 countries that took the test. USA was also below the average country score. So do the results that PARC is providing align with the international tests? The average PISA country places 12.6% of the students in the top performance category. USA placed 8.8% of its students in the top performing category, while China had 55% of its students in the top performance category for math. The Park assessment is described as a proficiency test. It is intended to tell us what students should know and be able to do at certain grade levels. But these results should not be that surprising, as United States student scores have shown low performance levels for years compared to other higher performing countries. 
exceeding expectations seem to align with the expectations of four-year selective institutions. In fact, 0% high school students achieving an exceed on the Park Math Test is similar to the 2% of high school students who score a 33 or higher on the ACT math portion. Given the issues with the administration of the Park Test this year and the lack of clarity around who took the test at each high school, this score is not that surprising. The problem for public school administrators and teachers is trying to explain to the public and parents why these results need some interpretation. Illinois State Superintendent Dr. Tony Smith, in a letter to Illinois superintendents, stated that the scores are lower than the previous scores because this is a new test that is aligned to new standards and this is the first year of the test. Superintendent Smith explained that scores will improve as teachers and students become more familiar with the higher standards, but that still leaves families and communities wondering how to assess the quality of their schools. In reality, the state has been moving to a new approach to evaluate schools for a while. Rather than looking at proficiency rates, which are an important goal, but not really an effective measure, state policy has moved towards looking at student growth. Student growth is described to be the growth an individual student makes from the beginning of the instructional period until the end of the period. This move has been most evident in educator evaluation. For example, it was reported to the PIAC, Performance Evaluation Advisory Committee, that one school district's growth score for all teachers averaged 3.5 on a four-point scale, even though many of these students in that school district would probably have fallen into the lower categories of the PARC assessment. This means that the district reported high student growth and subsequent high teacher ratings because the teachers took the students they had at the ability level that they entered the class and showed the growth the teacher was able to achieve during that growth period. The New York Times reported that 65.9% of people who graduated from high school the previous spring had enrolled in college. The National Center for Educational Statistics report that in 2013, the six-year graduation rate for first-time, full-time undergraduate students who began in their pursuit of a bachelor's degree at a four-year degree-granting institution in the fall of 2007 was 59%. That is, 59% of first-time, full-time students who began seeking a bachelor's degree at a four-year institution in the fall of 2007 completed degree at that institution by 2013. Thus, in my analysis, if 66% of high school graduates enroll in college, and then 59% of these high school graduates graduate college within six years, then an estimated 39% of high school graduates eventually graduate from college within the six-year time frame. I would assume this means they are college ready if in fact these high school graduates graduated from college within six years. This statistic is far more than the 17% of Illinois students who meet or exceeded expectations on PARC. I think the cut scores are not set correctly. As I mentioned earlier in this webinar, I believe the state of Illinois should follow the example of Ohio and include level three scorers as being college ready, just like Ohio did. 